Am I a jerk for dumping my boyfriend after a divine surprise from his ex? We had been together for a little over a year. I, a 25-year-old woman, and Mark, a 30-year-old man, were planning to move in together in six months when his lease ended. We had attended many events together, weddings, engagements, birthdays, even his grandparents' wedding anniversary. We were supposed to go to his friend's wedding in a neighboring country, but a few weeks before, he told me he didn't want me to go. This happened right when I was about to book the tickets. I asked why, and he said that I would be bored at the wedding. I was surprised because I knew his friends well, so I wouldn't have felt out of place anyway. Despite many heated discussions, he was adamant. This left me with an uneasy feeling, and I sensed that something was off. So, my friends and I decided to take a beach trip while he was away, and we extended it to a full week. My friend Ken's parents had a beach house two hours away, and the weather was promising, so we were looking forward to a fun and relaxing getaway. We were leaving on Wednesday, and were supposed to return early the following Wednesday morning to go straight to work. I didn't even bother telling my boyfriend. Honestly, it felt like he didn't care. I was on the verge of breaking up with him, but decided to enjoy the beach vacation first. Unexpectedly, I got a call from Melanie, 25 years old. She was the girlfriend of my boyfriend's best friend, Sam, 30 years old. We were supposed to travel with them. She overheard Mark talking to Sam. Sam was asking if he really wasn't taking me to the wedding. Mark replied yes, because his ex, Elizabeth, around 30 years old, had finally confirmed her attendance after delaying her response. She texted Mark that she couldn't wait to see him and had a surprise prepared for him. They broke up two years ago, and she lived abroad. As far as I knew, they had minimal contact. Mark was convinced that the surprise was a fling, as it had been some sort of playful fear during their relationship. In short, he didn't want me interfering with his chance to spend time with Elizabeth. He said it would be just this one time, but he had to do it. That was enough for me. I knew I was going to break up with him, but I didn't want him messaging me or trying to convince me to forgive him while I was on the beach. So, I postponed it until our return on Tuesday. Mark texted that he would stay with me until Thursday, since he was leaving on Friday morning and would be gone until Sunday. He didn't ask, just informed me. I replied that he couldn't stay because I was leaving very early on Wednesday morning for a week-long vacation and would see him the following week. I told him not to worry about keeping in touch because I planned to have a phone-free vacation as much as possible. He asked why, and I said I was going on vacation. He wanted to know who I was going with and asked 100 more questions. I told him we'd talk when I got back, that I was busy packing, and wished him to enjoy the wedding and hope it would be full of surprises for him. He didn't reply. We had a fantastic time on the trip. No rain, and we spent all day on the beach and went to nightclubs, local bars, and restaurants at night. I didn't post anything on social media, but I was definitely tagged in a bunch of photos. He texted me a few times on Thursday and Friday, but they were just generic messages like, I'm flying out now, and I arrived safely. But on Saturday, the day of the wedding, he started texting and calling a lot. His messages said that he missed me and that he made a mistake by not taking me with him. I didn't respond and didn't pick up the phone. The same thing happened on Sunday. When he came back on Sunday evening, 
he wanted to join us at the beach. I told him no. After all, he would just be bored. Melanie called me and couldn't stop laughing. His ex, Elizabeth, showed up at the restaurant on Friday for a group dinner, and her surprise was that she was seven months pregnant with her new husband, who was with her. Elizabeth played a cruel, but at the same time, hilarious prank on him. But it also led to the end of our relationship. Nevertheless, I was grateful to Elizabeth for showing me who he really was. Mark came over to my place on Wednesday, after I returned and started showering me with love messages, saying how much he missed me, and apologizing again. At that moment, I told him that I knew why he didn't want to take me with him, and that the surprise was nothing more than a pregnant ex and her husband. I then told him that it was over between us. He had planned to cheat, even if he didn't succeed. I laughed at how Elizabeth pranked him, but honestly, deep down, I was still in shock. He tried to convince me to change my mind because, according to him, he didn't actually cheat. But I didn't budge. Am I a jerk for dumping him even though he technically didn't cheat? Now, on to the top comments. Melanie is a true friend for looking out for you. Melanie is a hero. And honestly, so was Elizabeth. Lady Karma outdid herself with that surprise. Not a jerk. And let Melanie pass on the thanks to Elizabeth. I'm so happy for him. Not only did he fail to sleep with his ex, which was so important to him that he was willing to sacrifice his relationship, but now he's also single. What a loser. Onward and upward, OP. You're not a jerk. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. I hope you had a great vacation. I love that phrase, because I should have listened to it a long time ago. You'll meet someone better one day. OP, I'm looking forward to your next story. Am I at fault for blocking and quietly breaking up with my unfaithful fiance? I'm 35, and I was dating Michael, who is 36, for five years. We were engaged for about six months. I thought our relationship was perfect and believed we'd spend our lives together and start a family. But to summarize, I found out he had been cheating on me with a colleague for a year, even before our engagement. At first, I was livid and wanted to ruin their lives. But after 12 hours of thinking and crying while he was away on a business trip, I realized any action would be pointless. My goal was to create a family, so I decided I didn't want to waste any more time on someone who wouldn't be a part of my life. So, I just let it go. I packed up my things, asked my father to help me move them back to my parents' place, and began moving on. I left all shared items that now seemed alien to me. I moved out of our home, and by about the second day, he started trying to call me constantly, but I ignored his calls. There were some shared matters to settle. We didn't have joint bank accounts, but there were many other things that needed to be divided. Our lives were quite separate. On the third day, without talking to him, I blocked him and asked my parents not to discuss anything with him. They understood the situation, and I let them keep in touch with him if they wanted, but asked them not to mention me. My dad liked him, but I asked them not to talk about me at all. After his business trip, he showed up at our home, but I asked my father to tell him I had nothing to discuss, and he left. Two weeks passed, and he didn't come back. So, we still haven't spoken, and I haven't unblocked him. Now I feel like I'm finally moving forward. I'm looking for an apartment and hope to sign a lease by the end of the month. I didn't feel the need to communicate with him and didn't think I owed anything to someone who did this to me. Not even a conversation. This morning, 
after discussing my plans, my parents strongly suggested I talk to him. They think I'll regret it, that everyone can make mistakes, and that without his confessions, I can't be 100% sure he was cheating. I said I didn't want to waste time on it, and though it seems selfish, his story won't help me heal. My mom and I had a serious argument, and she said she raised me to be more compassionate and caring. Should I owe something to a traitor? Am I at fault? P.S. Some people were curious. Sorry I missed mentioning how I found out about his infidelity. I'm completely certain of his cheating. I was sitting at the computer downstairs when an email came through Outlook. Knowing we only had Gmail accounts, it immediately seemed strange. I opened the tab and found numerous recent emails with orders for various items like El Brazil, KY, and so on. We never used such things, so my suspicions immediately increased. I started checking the emails and initially found nothing unusual, though I didn't read the emails sent from his work address. Eventually, I decided to look through a few of these emails, and they turned out to be explicitly sexual in nature and included a schedule of their meetings, dates, and intimate encounters over the past nine months. Now for the popular comments, you're not at fault, and I'm also inclined to suspicion, so I'm almost sure that at least one of your parents continues to communicate with him and pass on some information. Put your parents on an information diet and strictly warn them to keep your new location secret. You showed maturity and dignity, stood up for yourself. There's absolutely nothing to regret. And why should anyone sympathize with a cheater and a liar? Don't regret anything. Hold your head high and move on. The last situation I found myself in. I'm an idiot who told a colleague I couldn't attend her funeral because I had plans that day. Here's the situation. I have a colleague. Let's call her Olivia. Olivia is a unique individual, constantly planning for every possible scenario. Last week, she informed us that she had planned her own funeral, complete with a guest list, food, and even a DJ. She clearly wants her last day to be a grand celebration of life. Olivia approached me during lunch and said, hey, I've scheduled you to attend my funeral next Saturday at 2 p.m. Since then, Olivia has been cold towards me, and our colleagues are divided in their opinions. Some think I'm heartless for refusing to go to her strange funeral rehearsal, while others believe she's lost her mind for expecting people to actually show up to this event. So, am I really wrong? for declining to attend my living colleague's pre-planned funeral, citing that I'd rather watch a TV show. For those concerned about her health, she's fine. I overheard someone asking her about it, and she responded that it's just a celebration of life. Yes, it might seem selfish, not inviting people to your funeral when you're still alive. While it's not entirely absurd, it could upset those who have recently lost a loved one. It feels like she's mocking funerals. I understand those who think she's out of line. This whole situation really bothers me because I recently lost a friend who couldn't even attend her own living funeral. We planned this celebration of life to give her a chance to see her loved ones while she still could and to give her precious time to travel with her partner before entering hospice care. But the illness progressed so quickly that the medication completely took over and she became unrecognizable. She passed away one year after being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, a week before her birthday and the celebration. She was an amazing woman, a fighter for equality, education, and social justice. It's unfair that she's gone, 
and I'm still devastated that I couldn't say goodbye to her. Living funerals are a sacred and rare opportunity. While I'd love to see more events like this for our elders, while they're still with us, and for our friends and family who are battling leukemia, I believe it shouldn't be trivialized by someone who is young, healthy, and capable of working. This whole situation frustrates me more and more. Let's call it what it is. It's a narcissistic party that no one is obligated to attend. And you shouldn't feel pressured by anyone to do something you're uncomfortable with. I've always believed that when colleagues are just colleagues, they're not friends, and I avoid socializing with them. If you feel pressured or harassed about this, talk to management. It's a weird environment, and there are a few other people who love this woman and are willing to do these things for her. As for me, I don't care, and I refuse to support it. Of course, I work there and don't want to make enemies or be on bad terms with anyone. I don't understand how anyone could think this is normal. Honestly, if you're not being paid to attend this event, you're absolutely not obligated to go. It's strange behavior, I know. Sure, the way she organized this made me feel uncomfortable. Imagine getting paid for it. That would be even more ridiculous. Funeral rehearsal. Does it include burial or cremation? Just curious. Oh, and no, I wouldn't pretend to take it seriously, only to be horrified later when I find out she's just doing it for fun or shows up screaming that she's risen from the grave like a zombie. Then, one could report to the newspaper that the funeral of a sick enemy was taking place and she became a laughingstock stock 